for our visitors, you might be wondering why we're playing this video. Uh, the reason we're playing the video is because this morning we are sending um, two families, one of our pastors and then the Rusis who you met, we're going to be sending them to Guatemala to plant our first uh, church from this church. So if you would please, as normally, turn to Luke chapter 24, verse 44. Uh, as we have our call to worship. And what we do during our call to worship is we look at, at uh, texts in the Bible. And what in this text is cause for us to praise, worship, give glory to our, to our triune God. So Luke chapter 24, and I will begin reading at verse 44. Luke 24, 44. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, blessing God. Amen. What is the cause for worship in this text? Look with me at verse 46. There's much, right? There's, there's something in, there's a lot of things in 44. There's some in 45, but we will look at verse 46. And he said to them, thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead. That is why we're here this morning. Right? That, that, that is why we're here. If we weren't sending Pastor Marcos to Guatemala, we'd still be here. Because Christ suffered under the wrath of God for the people of God. So that his wrath against their sins might be satisfied. and So that they might be washed clean and pure and set aside for the purposes of God. And he rose. He rose from the dead in power. And now his people are empowered by the same spirit that raised him from the dead to worship and to serve God with all of their heart and with all of their might. And because of that, because we are a new people and we understand the need of sinful men to hear the gospel preached, to hear the good news we take the Great Commission seriously. And in God's goodness and his kindness to us, uh, he's given us Pastor Marcos and his wife and his son and, and the Rusis who have a heart for the people of Guatemala. And in his goodness and in his grace and in his kindness, um, he has uh, allowed us to be privileged with the opportunity of sending this family uh, to plant a church in Guatemala City. It's Guatemala City. And there, they will do what verse 47 calls them to do. They will 
uh, preach repentance and the forgiveness of sins to that nation. This is great cause for rejoicing. When, when one sinner is saved, heaven erupts with joy and praise and glory to God. The Lord Jesus loves sinners. God was the first evangelist in the Bible. When man sinned and fell into his wickedness and depravity, God comes for man. And he seeks him and finds him and speaks his word to him and speaks a word of promise to him. And Jesus Christ himself comes to do the will of his father. And what is his father's will? That he would, of course, uh, preach the good news of the kingdom, preach the gospel. And in his person and in his work, he is the substance of what he preached. And that is what we are bringing to Guatemala, Guatemala City. We are bringing the gospel of grace. And that is great cause for praise and rejoicing. I have ten more points, but <laughs> Pastor Marcos is preaching this morning. So, so let's pray and continue to worship God together with that in mind that that this text in by God's goodness and by his grace to us uh, we we as a church we do this here right? we, we do this work here right? and we, we've by the grace of God there are men and women in this church who do this faithfully preach the gospel present Christ lift him up to others and in God's goodness now he is allowing us to extend that gospel and our ministry to another country. That is great cause for praise, for praising and glorifying God. So pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the grace that you have bestowed upon us. First and foremost, in your Son Christ by the Spirit. And we, we praise you, Lord. Uh, we, we gather here every Sunday and we live our entire lives devoted to you because of that. And what, what great grace now you have extended to us that we can uh, partner with our uh, beloved pastor and with our beloved brother in bringing this gospel to another nation, Lord. I pray that this would uh, uh, just fill our hearts with great joy that Christ will be lifted up to the men and women in Guatemala. Lord, please, we pray that your spirit would be here this morning, uh, that you would empower us, Lord, to sing and to pray and to listen uh, with all of our might and all of our heart. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Please stand and sing.
2 Corinthians chapter 5. The word of God says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the world of reconciliation, the word. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God.
God, Father in heaven, all glory be to Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We are redeemed and saved because of Christ. We are forgiven because of Christ. And it is because of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we look forward to our spending eternity with him, singing before his throne glorifying him for who he is we are all but a vapor we are here one day and we're not here the next just speaking with family member last night a pastor preached last sunday morning and died last night and i pray lord god that we would serve you this very morning as if tomorrow is not our own but that we would worship you this very minute to glorify you to worship you for who you are for what you've done and for what lies ahead. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And before we continue with the service, let me give you a few announcements from your bulletin. I'm Pastor Mark Brashear, one of the pastors here at Cornerstone. If you're visiting with us, welcome. We're glad you're here. And uh, you visiting with us this morning, you're visiting on a very special Sunday. We get to uh, conduct a little family business this morning as we prepare to send uh, to... Uh, beloved families to Guatemala City. Boy, it's going to be a long day if uh, can't move a little faster than this. So uh, I'm getting all teary-eyed over the announcements. If you will turn your, your bulletin to the announcements page, let me give you a few reminders. Um, next Sunday, being the first Sunday of the month, we as a church family celebrate the Lord's Supper together. And so we want to remind you of that this Sunday so that you can take this week to prepare for that. It's a very important time. Uh, we don't take the Lord's Supper lightly. Uh, that's a, a time of self-examination. It's a time of rejoicing in what the Lord has done. And so next Sunday, prepare for the Lord's Supper. And we'll talk about that more next week. Also, next Sunday, being the first Sunday of the month, we have our leadership meeting after church. So leaders, deacons, please uh, plan to be at that. And also next Sunday evening is our... Um, bi-monthly Q&A session. So if you have questions that you'd like to be answered during that Q&A session, uh, please fill those out. Uh, you can write it on a slip of paper. Uh, give that to Ms. Karen after the service. Ms. Tina will get those uh, into the computer and be able to answer those for you next Sunday evening. This evening, we're going to have a fellowship with the Mudges and the Roosies. And so uh, please plan to come to that. There'll be a time where you can uh, ask questions of them and a time to encourage them. Uh, there'll be a time where we will pray for them and then there'll be ice cream, food, snacks, all those good Baptist things. Okay, so that's gonna be tonight. Please come tonight to the, uh, the fellowship for uh, those folks. And with that, before we get into the next part of our service, I'd like to play another video for you. Thanks, brothers. subjective, objective, collective, and effective. So first, subjective. Subjective is the call and the feeling, the burden that Jeremiah had when he said that there was a fire in his bones when his mouth was shut, that he needed to open his mouth to, in order to preach the Word of God, a burden to preach the Word of God. So subjective is one. Then objective is another. Is do you actually have the ability to be in the ministry? Has God given you those giftings? And, and by God's grace, I believe he has. So subjective, objective, collective. Collective is, does the church affirm that you have the gift to be able to teach? And by God's grace, Cornerstone Baptist Church has affirmed that, that gifting. And so subjective, objective, collective, and effective. Effective would be, has the Lord produced fruit? Has the Lord given fruit for that ministry? So how's that worked out for me? That has worked out for me in that years ago, I began to teach the Bible in Bible studies, 
and then I began to study for, and prepare for the ministry in my local church, Cornerstone Baptist Church, and through those things and more opportunities to serve has just grown and grown and grown so that the church now is sending us to be able to go and start another church in Guatemala. Well, it started with Ashley having the burden to be able to preach the gospel to her family. And that started in 2007. And then since that time, we've had the opportunities to be able to go down and minister there. There have been a number of opportunities of the Lord opening a door for the gospel in the community. We've had opportunities to disciple people. And the more time we spend there, the more burden we've had for the people, and the more we see the need for a church with sound doctrine there. We don't know of another Reformed Baptist congregation in Guatemala. So it's a major metropolitan city, four million people. And for that many people, not to be a Reformed Baptist congregation is, shows there's, there's a great need for the, for the biblical doctrine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I think what compels or gives me a greater burden is when I was doing some discipleship with some of the ladies there and how they didn't really have a, an idea of what a sound biblical church looked like. How it, How is it that you would evangelize? How is it that you would practice church discipline? How is, it was just like they had no clue. Um, so that that really just makes my heart heavy for them that they don't, I, don't ha- I wouldn't have any place to send them to. Um, I wish I, I would have been able to, but um, hopefully we would, they, I will <laughs> in the near future. If you'd like to be able to help, we've set up the website for that purpose. So the website is missionsgua.org, and it's set up for three primary ways to help. One would be that you would be able to pray for us. We want to be able to continue to update prayer requests there, the word of the Lord would run, that people would be converted and saved, that we'd be faithful to the Lord and His word. Second, if you'd like to be able to help, and you have the opportunity to give financially on the website, and we may try to make that as convenient as possible for you. And, then, and third, if you'd like to be able to consider going long term to be part of the church or to be trained in missions, then we would be glad to be able to disciple and train people for that very purpose. So I would I would remind you that if you in partnering with us, we're not making a McDonald's and we're bringing a, a business or a restaurant or something to Guatemala. This is about the glory of Jesus Christ. This is about his gospel being spread and people coming to repentance and faith, going to heaven to worship him. This is about the glory and honor of Jesus Christ. So please join us in this work and you'll be glad that you did that in the in heaven. That gives you a good introduction to what we're talking about today and the joy that we have to be able to, uh, to get this church plan started in Guatemala City. And uh, the Roosies and the Mudges have purchased their one-way plane tickets and are heading out this week. Um, what we want to do, I want to do a, a couple of things. I want to um, exhort you. I want to call to your remembrance uh, the work that the Lord is doing and will do there in Guatemala City uh, uh, by his grace through the Mudges, through the Roosies there. And I want to give you an opportunity to praise the Lord for uh, this tremendous uh, blessing that we have. Uh, With that, as you are, as we work through text of scripture together this morning, we have cards available. And I'd like you to be able to fill those cards out. uh, If you'd like to write a word of encouragement, Uh, we want to be able to collect a bunch of cards from you today, tonight, uh, for the Mudges, the Roosies to be able to uh, look at, not any earlier than when they get on the plane, (laughs) to give them something to do on the plane. But we want to encourage them. And so if if the folks will pass out some of those cards as we talk, that'll be helpful. And um, write some encouraging notes to them that'll bless them uh, as they um, make their way to Guatemala City. All right, turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. 
This is a, a tremendous blessing that we have. Uh, the Lord is so gracious, so good. And we've seen the Lord faithful to his promises, uh, faithful to press the gospel into uh, the world. And we've seen the gospel bearing fruit. And uh, we are very, very grateful to play a part in that. But that promise is based uh, in the Lord's faithfulness. Uh, that promise made by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And we get one indication of that in Matthew chapter 16. And look down with me at verse 13. And we want to praise and thank the Lord, rejoice in the Lord for what he's doing. In Matthew chapter 16, in verse 13, Matthew writes, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And so they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, verse 15, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Well, today we have the blessing, the blessed privilege of rejoicing in the Lord for his unwavering faithfulness to this promise. He has said, I will build my church. He is worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. Amen? And we want to acknowledge him in this tremendous blessing that he's given us to be a part of what he is doing in the world to build his church. Now notice first what he says in verse 18. He says, I, I will build my church. The I there refers to the Lord Jesus Christ. With Peter in verse 16, we confess also with him that he is the Christ the son of the living God. One has said that Jesus Christ came from the bosom of the father to the bosom of a woman. He put on humanity that we might put on divinity. He became son of man that we might become sons of God. He was born contrary to the laws of nature, lived in poverty, was reared in obscurity, and only once crossed the boundary of the land in which he was born, and that in his childhood. He had no wealth or influence, had neither training nor education in the world's schools. His relatives were inconspicuous and uninfluential. In infancy, he startled a king. In boyhood, he puzzled the learned doctors. In manhood, he ruled the course of nature. He walked upon the billows and hushed the sea to sleep. He healed the multitudes without medicine and made no charge for his services. He never wrote a book, and yet all the libraries of the world could not hold the books about him. He never wrote a song, yet he has furnished the theme for more songs than all songwriters together. He never founded a college, yet all the schools together cannot boast of as many students as he has. He never practiced medicine, and yet he has healed more broken hearts than all the doctors have healed broken bodies. This Jesus Christ is the star of astronomy, the rock of geology, the lion and the lamb of zoology, the harmonizer of all discords, the healer of all diseases. Throughout history, great men have come and gone, yet he lives on. Herod could not kill him. Satan could not seduce him. Death could not destroy him, and the grave could not hold him. In Revelation chapter 5, he is the only one worthy to open the scroll, to open its seals. For he was slain, and he has redeemed us to God by his blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. That's who the I is. He is the one that we worship. He is the one that we trust, in whom we trust. And notice next in verse 18 that he says he promises to build it. He says, I will build my church and praise God. He is faithful to his promise. These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and he shuts and no one opens. The amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. He's not building here, in Matthew chapter 16, with brick and mortar. He's not building 
a school, not building a hospital, not building a parachurch ministry, not simply building a ministry. He's building a church. Peter says that his elect come to him as living stones, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. He's building his church. Amen? We see that now, this opportunity, this blessed privilege, this blessing from God to have a part in him building his church in Guatemala City. We are grateful to God for that blessed opportunity, that blessed privilege. Thirdly, in verse 18, the church belongs to him. He says, I will build my church. In Acts chapter 20, verse 28, it is the church which he has purchased with his own blood. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, those in the church are not their own. They were bought with a price. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, Christ loves the church and he gave himself for her. God has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. He's not building a homeless shelter. He's not building a hospital. He's building his body. He's building his hands, his feet, redeemed sinners, blood bought out of bondage, conveying them and us into the kingdom of the son of his love. And he is the head of his body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. The one who's been given all authority has said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Amen. For Mark and Ashley, Lee and Gabby, you know, for those of us who hold the rope here at Cornerstone, this is a promise that the Lord is fulfilling now. Amen. This is a, a promise that the Lord is fulfilling. And this is a promise that we can stand on. He says, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And we want to pray first and thank the Lord for his faithfulness to his word, his faithfulness to his promise. The fact that his promise, that promise, his evident faithfulness being worked out among us as we prepare now to send Mark and Ashley, Lee and Gabby, their families to Guatemala City. And so I'd like to ask my brother Ben, Ben, would you mind just praying and thanking the Lord for his faithfulness, uh, thanking the Lord for his, his covenant with us, his promise to press the gospel into the world, specifically now in Guatemala. Thanks, brother. Let's pray. Okay, let's pray. Holy Father, we exalt you today. We glorify you today. Uh, your people see you as enthroned uh, we see you as our our king and the creator of all things by whom and through whom all things were made and lord we we depend upon you right now in in this sending we know that this is according to your will and we we greatly desire your blessing um first and foremost lord we 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 pray that you would bring glory to yourself in doing this that you would that you would be exalted uh, in the sight of not just your church but all peoples one day that they would see that the building of your church was your doing and and it will be marvelous in their eyes uh, how in spite of so many obstacles in spite of so many impossibilities uh, the church has overcome uh, not just the last 2,000 years, but, but really uh, from the very beginning, uh, from, the, from the garden, and how you have prevailed and, and how we can look back 2,000 years and see the victory that, that Christ uh, accomplished on the cross, and then how we can see how he sent his apostles out and how they started a, a, a thing that was new to the Jews um, and yet beloved by those who were saved. So Lord, we, we pray that uh, you would continue to dispense your, your mercy and your grace uh, through the preaching of the gospel, through the building of your church, that you would 
do as you have told us in the book of Romans in chapters 9, 10, 11, that you would uh, call forth your elect, your chosen people, uh, those who you have set your mercy on from eternity past, those who you've predestined. The, as we often say here that the, the pond is stocked. There, there's no question that people will be saved. There's no question that not everyone will uh, reject the gospel. Uh, but rather that those who, to whom the gospel is preached, to whom God has set aside for mercy, will, will respond. And so we're not, uh, as Pastor Rick was teaching this morning, it, it may be seven years before we see a convert, although we know we've got converts there now, but uh, we would not be laboring in vain, even if we had to persevere that long. And many of us here in Orlando know that we've had to persevere quite a long time through many dry spells and not seeing people being genuinely and soundly saved. And yet we do not lose hope, and, and um, we continue uh, because of your promise. And so we reflect on, on the facts of, of the promises of the Word of God and, and, and setting people aside to be saved. We, we look to the fulfillment of the Abrahamic promise that, uh, that you would give Abraham just many seed that would not even be more than the stars, that more than could be counted. Um, and so we know that those things are, are certain and sure, and it's only a matter of uh, being a part of that and actively uh, seeking to work that out practically here on earth, uh, prayerfully and, and uh, with planning and, and, with, and, with, um, and with diligence and, and, and like today with, with just action. And so, Lord, we, we pray that when you build your church in Guatemala that... Um, you would use our, our brothers and sisters mightily out there that you would, by the gospel, regenerate uh, many souls, justify many people through Jesus Christ, through the uh, preaching of the gospel. You would radically change the, the nature of people, uh, that you would, uh, they would not require a 12-step program, but rather just a, an overnight conversion, and that they would see all things new, even from the very next day, um, as, as they begin to realize a, a new life in, in following Christ. And Lord, we uh, pray that for those people that, that you will save, that you will sanctify them, that you will d deliver them from the power and the presence of sin and, and, uh, and of course, the penalty of sin. And that uh, you would form out there another part of your overall universal church of living stones being put together uh, by the Lord himself uh, to one day be uh, just a uh, testament of your great power and, and your great mercy on sinful and wicked people such as ourselves. And so we're, we're grateful that we, we have Christ and he has changed us, he has delivered us from uh, so, so such a great penalty, uh, such a great debt, but also the, delivered us from the love of sin, uh, the, the love for those passions, um, and has transcended us in, into a place of, of the love of Christ, the love of the gospel, um, and the love to see uh, sinners saved. So we pray that you would do all these things that you said you would do, Lord, and, and that you would allow us to have a, a part in that in Guatemala. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. And next now, I want to encourage you from Scripture with an example of just how the Lord does that, right? Turn with me to Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. We're a part of a legacy that began with the Lord's promise to build his church. He does that clearly in Scripture. He's done that throughout history. And now it's our turn to bear that same torch for him as we print Iglesia Biblica Antorcha. They, I feel like an Italian when I say the name. Um, <laughs> but we look forward to that as we carry that torch uh, in our generation, as a, in our piece of history. But I want to encourage you with this from Scripture, this legacy. Look at Acts chapter 11 and drop down to verse 19. 19. You have the church at Jerusalem. And after Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was given and the church was founded, 3,000 were added and then more were added. Look at verse 19. 
Now, those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but to Jews only. Immediately after the church was founded, there came persecution. That often is the case. And in verse 20, but some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene who, when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. And there the church at Antioch was planted. Verse 22. The news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came, he had seen the grace of God. He was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. When he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And so it was that for a year, a whole year, they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. So you have the church in Jerusalem gets planted. The church immediately begins to share the gospel, immediately preaching Christ. Persecution had scattered them. And through that means, God planted the church in Antioch. Turn the page with me and look at Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. The Lord promises to build his church, and we see him doing that here uh, throughout the book of Acts, but specifically with one example, beginning in Acts 11, we see the church in Antioch planted. In Acts chapter 13, look at verse 1. Now in that church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who is called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and they sent them away. Uh, their purpose here was to send them on Paul's first missionary journey to plant churches. They were planting churches. Flip the page and look at Acts, Acts chapter 16. Let's look at it, the example of one of those churches that was planted, Acts chapter 16. And again, this is the Lord Jesus Christ, faithful to his promise to build his church. We see it taking place here in the book of Acts, throughout history, and then now through us. Acts chapter 16, drop down to verse 11. Therefore, verse 11, sailing from Troas, we ran straight, a straight course to Samothrace, and the next day came to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi. Philippi, which is the foremost city of that part of Macedonia, a colony. And we were staying in that city for some days, and on the Sabbath, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. We sat down a prayer meeting, as if you will, with a group of women who met there in Philippi. Verse 14. Now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira who worshiped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And so she persuaded us. And thus the church in Antioch then begins to plant through Barnabas and Paul, the church at Philippi. And notice how the Lord works, right? You send a man down there to preach the gospel. A gospel is preached and through the gospel being preached, the Lord opens the hearts of those hearers. And here in the case of Lydia, Lydia becomes the, the first convert, if you will, of the church plant of Philippi. Uh, but how did this church develop and grow? Look at verse 16. Now, as it happened, verse 16 as we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune-telling. So this fortune-telling slave girl becomes the next member of the church at Philippi. This girl followed Paul and us, cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who pro proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you, in the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her. It came out that very hour. When her masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, dragged him into the marketplace to the authorities. More persecution, right? They brought them to the magistrate and said, these men being Jews exceedingly trouble our city. They teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or to observe. Multitudes rose up together against them. So we see persecution again breaking out. You have now Lydia in Philippi. Now you have a little 
slave girl, former fortune teller, who now has been genuinely saved and now is part of the church at Philippi. But the Lord's not done. And of course, it wasn't done. Look at verse 25. They put Paul and Silas in jail. And at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God in verse 25. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep, seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm for we are all here. And he called for a light, ran in, fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? It's an awesome question, right? <laughs> right? Um, so they said, verse 31, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him, all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. And when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Lydia and her household, slave girl, came to the church at Philippi and now the Philippian jailer and his household. So what became of this little church, this church plant at Philippi? Look with me at 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and look at chapter 8. This is what the Lord does, right? The Lord builds his church and he is faithful to that. Our responsibility as a people, our responsibility as the body of Christ is to put our faith and trust in him and press forward into the work. And what if Paul and Barnabas had never gone, right? What if Paul and Silas had never made it to Philippi? No, but the Lord said, I will build my church. Their faithfulness to go was the means by which God planted that church. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, Look at verse 1. What became of this church plant in Philippi? Moreover, brethren, verse 1, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Now in Macedonia, the churches that are being referred to there is the church of the Thessalonians in Thessalonica, the church at Berea that we know about from Acts chapter 17, and then the church at Philippi, the church plant at Philippi. Look at verse 2. What characterized that church that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave of themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. So we urged Titus that as he begun, so he would also complete this grace in you as well. But as you abound in everything, in faith and speech and knowledge and all, in all diligence and in your love for us, see that you abound in this grace also. That little church in Philippi being under a severe trial of poverty, uh, being under severe affliction became examples here to specifically to the church at Corinth in their giving, in their ministering to the saints. It's a beautiful picture, isn't it? it? Through here, beginning, the beginning of the church age, the Lord Jesus Christ promises to build his church. We see that played out in the book of Acts here specifically with the church at Antioch and the church at Antioch faithful to obey the Lord, separating to them Barnabas and Paul to go on the missionary journey. Part of that journey was to plant the church at Philippi. We see the Lord grow that church at Philippi. It's through God's work that he does it. And then we see the fruit of that work in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Just one example among many, countless examples of the Lord being faithful to build his church and faithful to produce fruit that glorifies him through that work. Now we get to be a part of that, right? The journey that we begin today is a part of that legacy of God's faithfulness, of God's redemptive purposes on the planet. We get to be a part of carrying, bearing that same torch, the torch that brothers and sisters 2,000 years ago began to carry, and now churches throughout history have done. We now in our generation get to do that. That's something to rejoice about, amen? Amen. Now, don't we have cause for celebrating what the Lord has done with this church plant? Amen? So we can't 
look at that short, brothers and sisters. That's a glorious, glorious blessing. And we want to pray now and thank the Lord that we've been given this blessing, that we've been given this opportunity. And I would like to ask Dale, brother, where are you? Thank you, brother. Dale, would you mind praying? Just thanking the Lord that we get to take part in that heritage of the Lord of him building his church and specifically with reference to Guatemala City. Thank you, brother. Father in heaven, we are um, so grateful for how you have worked among us um, these many years. Um, just here in this church, we have seen how you have um, guided us and uh, protected us and blessed us. And um, we are just amazed when we uh, think about even our own um, salvation, how you've peeled away scales from our eyes and uh, caused us to see ourselves the way that you see us and then um, at the same time given us um, the gift of repentance and faith and called us into your kingdom and um, our praise for you for this kindness is just endless we worship you and thank you and Lord, we are um, so grateful, too, for um, the privilege of being uh, the stewards of your gospel um, here in this community and um, throughout the city, even the state, and now um, to other countries. Um, Lord, over the years and many visits that um, the people in this church have made to Guatemala uh, already uh, dozens, even hundreds, um, have heard the gospel preached. And um, Lord, we know that um, your word does not return void. And um, we think of uh, people that, that we've already spoken to. Um, um, Oscar, uh, a young man in uh, Parque Central um, in Guatemala City, and uh, El Eugenio, uh, a guard that we spoke to um, at a neighborhood in Guatemala City, and Angel and Carlos, um, a shopkeeper, and his employee, um, Maria, um, a lady who wanted to kill her father for, for the abuse that he had inflicted on her. Uh, Manuel, a, a drunkard, crying um, as if to be aware of the chains that he was um, bound by. Um, Rolando, a cab driver, and Carlos, uh, a vendor. Um, and, and the names just go on and on, Lord. And uh, in that city of millions, um, there are so many who uh, have not yet heard. Uh, they've been exposed to um, all kinds of false messages that are preached by uh, wicked men um, who are building fortunes for themselves and uh, rather than glorifying you. And um, so there's a a war there, Lord, uh, for uh, the souls of uh, people. And uh, we just count it a privilege that uh, you've enlisted us to uh, send uh, Mark and Ashley and Lee and Gabby. Um, uh, Lord, help us to be faithful to remember uh, them daily in prayer, um, to, to give faithfully to their work um, and to just be um, thankful for um, the privilege of, of being part of this work. Uh, Lord, we don't know how the history uh, will be written in Guatemala um, in decades and centuries uh, from now, but uh, what we pray for, Lord, is um, that uh, you would be glorified, that uh, your truth, uh, your gospel 
uh, would be proclaimed far and wide in all of Guatemala and that um, other uh, true churches would be planted as a result of uh, this work that, that uh, we're embarking on today. So we just thank you for um, how, how you're at work among us and for uh, the privilege of, of planting this church. And it's um, just an amazing kindness that you've shown us. And so we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. The next one I want to do is part of that legacy as part of that heritage we have responsibility we have responsibility so i want to exhort you from the from scripture uh, look at second thessalonians chapter three. Second thessalonians chapter three So first to Cornerstone Orlando and then to Cornerstone Guatemala. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. For those of us who will remain here, look at verse 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you. That's interesting there. We need to pray. Just as Dale was praying, uh, we need to continue to pray uh, for the Rusis, for the Mudges. We need to pray for people in Guatemala. We need to pray that the gospel um, runs swiftly and will be glorified. And then he adds that phrase, just as it is with you. And we need to maintain faithfulness to spread the gospel here. Maintain faithfulness to preach the word of God here. We have unreached people in our own backyard. Amen? You have unreached neighbors. We have unreached co-workers. We have to be faithful to the gospel here. And that's one of the reasons with a clear conscience before God that as we're faithful here, we can then send Mark and Ashley, Lee and Gabby, their families to Guatemala City. It wasn't that Paul and Barnabas were sent from Antioch and then all of a sudden Antioch ceased their work of evangelism. You know, Paul and Barnabas are going to take care of that. Uh, we'll just uh, deal with our house business here. Uh, no, those faithful brothers, faithful sisters kept preaching the gospel. And we need to do the same and honor the Lord in that. Verse two, also pray for them. They may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for not all have faith. Verse three, but the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things that we command you. We need to pray. We need to, as our brother prayed, we need to continue giving give. We need to give tithes to this church, offerings above and beyond the tithe to the work in Guatemala. Praise the Lord. He has provided for um, them financially. We're very grateful for that. Um, there's more to be done. Uh, keep giving. And a year from now, keep giving. Keep being faithful to your word uh, to support them in that. Uh, this is not going to be a, a sprint. This is a marathon. Uh, so keep giving. Uh, encourage the families in the work. Uh, encourage them. Text them regularly. I don't know how text works to Guatemala, but keep doing it until we figure out. <laughs> if it doesn't work, we'll do something else. Send up smoke signals, carrier pigeons. But we need to encourage them in the work. It can be very uh, lonely, very difficult work. Um, and it's going to be difficult, and it's going to be daily uh, evangelism, uh, hard hardship, difficulty. There's already been difficulty. By the Lord's grace, he's allowed that to happen so that we don't depend upon ourselves or our own strength, but we learn to depend upon him. And we've already seen a tremendous amount of difficulty even getting the church uh, started down there. So please continue to encourage those families. And then you can plan at some point in the future to go down and visit and uh, encourage them by your presence and working and laboring down there with them. So we'll talk about that more as the, uh, the months pass and we're able to do that after they uh, get settled. All right, to Cornerstone, Guatemala. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I want to exhort Pastor Mark, Lee, and their families from 2 Timothy chapter 4 with a work that has to be done. And Paul says to Timothy, and Paul says to you, to us, he says in verse 1, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, 
exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. They will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you, you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. It's a high calling, right? And um, praise the Lord for Mark, Lee, their families, uh, that he has raised up um, what we see as faithful men uh, to do just that. And so we rejoice in the Lord for that grace. But we want to pray and ask the Lord's help now in our keeping our charge and that also that uh, Mark, Lee, their families would keep their charge as well. Is Pastor Rick down here? Okay. I'm sorry, somebody pointing? Okay, <laughs> he's not. Uh, Robinson, would you mind, brother, praying for um, praying for uh, us that we would keep our charge for Lee and Gabby, for um, Mark and Ashley, that they would keep theirs as well. The Lord's help. Thank you, brother. Father in heaven, we come before you once more to thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be able to send off the Mudges and the Rusis to Guatemala to preach your word. Um, we pray, Lord God, that us as a church, that we would ourselves be faithful in the ministry, that we would care for the dying, care for the lost souls that are here amongst us in our neighborhoods. And I pray, Lord God, that even um, as we reach out to those who are lost in Guatemala, that you would charge uh, the Rusis and the Mudges by your spirit, Lord, that they would preach your word um, with efficacy, that they would be um, diligent, Lord, to reach out all of those, Lord, who are uh, unsaved and uh, who need to hear about Christ. Uh, all of this, Lord, is for your glory, so help us to be faithful, to be faithful at home, to be faithful at work um, as we preach your word uh, here in Orlando, in Florida, in the United States, and throughout the rest of the world. May your name be glorified and exalted through this ministry. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Uh, now, um, as they did in Acts 13, we want to do a proper sending. And so what I want to do is I want to ask uh, Mark Ashley, if you'll come up, Lee, Gabby, if you'll come up. Uh, maybe just come and stand down front, if you will. Um, deacons, if you're a deacon here, deacons, come on up too. Uh, let's call our leaders up and um, let's pray for the Mudges and the Rusies. I'm doing official commissioning and official sending. Come on, brothers. Pastor Rick, if you want to come up, brother. Thank you, man. I just tell you that, um, you know, over the years, uh, being able to serve, I know Pastor Rick would echo these comments that uh, the joy that we've had in being able to serve with Pastor Mark. Uh, has Pastor Mark been a blessing to our church? Amen. Amen. And so it's a, a joy uh, to be able to send him. Uh, in this work. Uh, he's been a joy to us. Uh, I've learned from this brother. Very grateful for you, brother. And uh, grateful. It's been a tremendous blessing uh, to serve you, uh, to love this church. I know he loves the Lord and loves you. And um, that's a joy. And so, uh, like for those in Antioch at the time, I'm sure it was a, a bittersweet time uh, sending off, uh, knowing you're doing the Lord's work, but at the same time, sending off a beloved brother. And so, uh, it's time to do that for our beloved brother, Pastor Mark and his family. We love you, Ashley. So many years playing the flute here, uh, working with the kids, ministering to the ladies. I just, I, countless uh, conversations that I've come to know about uh, where uh, Ashley has been an influence in somebody's life. Gabby, the same thing. Uh, many times, uh, Gabby pursuing sisters, faithfully serving up here, working at the church. Uh, a lot of you don't know that. Gabby's up here working at the church every week. Um, it's been for, for a long time. And just her faithfulness with the sisters and um, just highly commendable sister. We're grateful to the Lord for that. My brother Lee, um, man, I remember when you came. And just Lee was so serious about the word of God, wanting to honor the Lord, wanting to love the people, uh, very sober-minded. And uh, the Lord just uh, took him through that process of bringing him out of, uh, of uh, what wasn't a good church context and now um, 
to being a, a beloved brother here, serving the Lord's people, uh, honoring the Lord, it, uh, leading our worship team for a long time. Just very grateful for uh, what the Lord has done through Lee. And so we're going to miss you guys very much. Oh, we love you. I'm going to be praying that the Lord will bless your work in Guatemala. So let's pray together for them. Father in heaven, Lord, I'm very grateful to you uh, for these brothers, these sisters, their families. Grateful that they have uh, served um, so well here by your grace to them, that they have become to us precious. And we love them. We thank you for them. And we praise you and we worship you, Lord, in your goodness.